Right. Amy, now is Alabama Congresswoman Terry Sewell, who has asked the Justice Department to investigate these DMV closures, and MSNBC national reporter Zach Groff. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Uh, Representative Sewell, I want to ask, I want to start out with a little bit of the letter you sent to the Justice Department. You said, quote, despite a budgetary pretext, the consequence of this decision is to deny the most vulnerable in Alabama an equal opportunity to obtain a means to vote. Have you had a response yet from the DOJ? I I haven't had a response yet from the DOJ. I did see um, Attorney General Loretta Lynch a couple of days after I sent the letter formally and was able to hand her the letter uh, personally. I think it's so important that we remember that the state of Alabama or any state cannot require a photo ID uh, and then at the same time cut the form of receiving that ID, which is a driver's license. So, look, my uh, governor and I can agree to disagree on whether or not uh, the intent uh, was, was voter suppression, but I think there's no denying that the effect of it definitely will make it disproportionately harder for African American voters in my district. Zach, oh, politics seems to happen through Twitter nowadays, and the, the Alabama governor went on Twitter uh, going after Hillary Clinton. He said, it seems Mrs. Clinton isn't as well versed in Alabama's budgeting process as she is in exploiting a situation for her personal political gain. And he also said, meanwhile, Mrs. Clinton can work to solve that country's $18 trillion deficit in the unfortunate event she is elected president. It's not just Clinton here, it's Bernie Sanders. Is this issue going to run and run in terms of at least the Democratic primary? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You're seeing it flare up now. And, and what we're seeing is Democrats understand this is not only an issue that a big part of their base cares hugely about for very obvious historical reasons, uh, but also an issue where there's a real defining difference with Republicans, where it's very clear now the more people who vote, the better Democrats do. The fewer people who vote, the better Republicans do. And so you're seeing Democrats bring this up, Republicans trying to shy away from it. But we did have Jeb Bush come out recently recently and say he wouldn't uh, support reaffirming the Voting Rights Act. So a very clear, again, a very stark difference between the parties on this. So I want to talk to Congressman Woman Sewell here about the actual voters, because this is uh, allegedly going to affect the people who show up and vote. We haven't had a presidential election yet under these new ID laws, but in Alabama there was an election for governor in 2014. Here's the best data we have, courtesy of our friends at the Center for American Progress. Voter ID law affected somewhere between 250 of 500,000 voters. Governor Bentley won his race by 320,000 votes. Uh, Congresswoman Sewell, do you think these laws had an impact? I do believe the photo ID laws have an impact in making it harder for folks to vote. You know, I think that my Republican colleagues feel as if uh, just because there's not an outright denial of the right to vote, that somehow that's not suppression. But when you make it harder to vote, when you're making it harder for folks to, to be able to cast their ballot, you are suppressing their ability. And in turn, really it goes to the integrity of the electoral process. So my hope is that the state of Alabama will either repeal its um, photo ID law but more importantly, open up the 31 DMV offices at reasonable, during reasonable times so that people have equal access. I want to make sure that my uh, supporters and my voters and, and, and the, actually the constituents that I represent are, that are in Jefferson County uh, uh, and in, in Wilcox County have an equal access. So to me, it's about providing equal access. And if the government, if the state of Alabama wants to close its budget, um, I have one for you. They should expand Medicaid and $3 billion would come into the state of Alabama in federal funding for 2017. Zach, is anything going to change before the 2016 election? Uh, are these laws really fixed in place here? Yeah, I think there's there's not much going back on these. You know, we've seen the governor retreat a little bit by saying we'll keep it open one day of the weekend. Um, the other thing, does that, does that make a difference? I don't think if you're somebody trying to get an ID and you can't get there during the week, having it open a few hours during the weekend is a huge help, and that's what the congresswoman and others have said. The other thing to add one, is they passed said this law in 2011. No. Um, they didn't get it approved by the federal government as they were required to do, as probably because they knew that it wouldn't get approved. They waited until the, the Voting Rights Act had been weakened two years later, and then they said that very day, now the law is in effect because we don't need any federal approval. So that kind of shows you some of the some right. of the background on that. Congresswoman Sewell, final word. I hate you trying to get in there. Yes, no, I was just saying, the governor actually said he was going to open them up one day a month. And so... The
is a bare, bare bone minimum of access. You know, I think we here in Congress must uh, push ahead to try to restore the Voting Rights Act of 1965. It's clear to me that had the Voting Rights Act been in effect, that these decisions, a decision such as this that would direct, directly infect voting, would have been something that the Justice Department would have stricken down before it had the negative impact. No doubt. We'll keep a close eye on how the votes go down there in Alabama. Thank you, Congresswoman Terry Sewell and MSNBC Zach Roth.